Hi, my name's Bill Scott, and I love using engineering to solve problems and understand how things work. This led me to engineering school and a job I really enjoy in a highly regulated field where trying stuff out to see what happens is often not the best approach. Those jobs require a lot more careful planning and preparation. So in my evening and weekend time, I like taking a more curious, investigative approach to solving these problems. And I thought I'd film some of these and bring you along for the adventure from sort of initial design concept through what we need to get started and the process to get to that finished product. And the goal here would be to show you some of my thought process as we learn and investigate these things together. Uh, the disclaimer here would be I have no formal machining training. I'm an enthusiast and I come from a line of machine enthusiasts. So if you see better, faster ways of doing things, I'd love to hear your feedback as we're all learning and, and getting better together. So if that sounds interesting to you, let's get started. So here is the problem we're faced with today. I got a good deal on this mini chuck set for the wood lathe. So the basic idea here, this is the chuck. And the idea is you can squeeze the jaws here, hold a piece of wood in the chuck as you spin it on the lathe and turn it. The trouble is this one is inside here. The threading is one inch, eight threads per inch, or it's often referred to as one by eight thread. And that's very standard on wood lathes. Mine just happens to be a beaver lathe with this 7 8 inch, 14 threads per inch, and doesn't fit. So this won't, won't screw on securely. So we need some way to either attach this chuck to this adapter or attach the chuck directly to the lathe. And I'll show you an exploded view of the lathe and I'll show you an a video of what the lathe looks like to try and, and formulate what exactly are we trying to do here. So this is a PDF of the manual for my uh, beaver lathe. The internet is wonderful. And if we come down, so this is what it looks like, or a picture of it. I'll show you what it looks like in the shop. And the section here on headstock assembly is what I'm interested in. So it's talking about this number two Morse taper. So we'll talk a bit more about that, which is in the spindle. And the thread is 7 8 14 thread SAE on the front to take a spur center or some of the other attachments. So if we come down here to the exploded view. So this is the headstock here. So this is what rotates. This is the spindle adapter number three. And then this is the piece uh, number four that fits in there. So we'll talk about this number four piece. And the other interesting part about this adapter as it sits in here with this tapered number two Morse taper fit, number 23 here is a drawbar that goes through this head here and threads into number four. So that just keeps it in place there's different ways to mount things, uh, but this way with the drawbar is, I would say, the most secure. Pull it tight so there's no way it's going to come off this way. So we'll look at this piece in particular, number four, and a close-up on how that fits with the chuck. So this is the beaver lathe with the attachment that comes with it. Slides in there and the drawbar pulls it tight from the back. Keeps that snug. So this is the arrangement we have currently. So we have our mini chuck here. It's a bit greasy and I don't mind having grease on my hands, but uh, flipping back and forth and I'm really trying to avoid washing my hands 50 times a day. So that's why the, that's why the rag. So right now we've got the mini chuck here and we've got this adapter that doesn't quite fit. So if you were presented with a problem like this, what options do you have? We were fixed on this one by eight thread on this side, and we need a number two Morse taper here, and this one's nicely threaded in for the drawbar. So we need to keep those three things, but there's a few options that we have in the middle. So if I try and draw it out here, 
So we've got our number two Morse taper and we've got this 14, if we measured an inch here, one inch from here to here, we would have 14 threads in that one inch. And then this dimension here is seven eighths of an inch. And there are different ways of writing this, but MT2 is one way of writing uh, the Morse taper two. So that's the one piece that we have currently. This is a bit exaggerated and then it's threaded in here. And on the other side, we have the chuck. So it's got a bit of a shoulder there and it's down sort of like this. And then jaws sort of on this side, something like that. And then inside here, we have this one by eight, something like that. And again, if we measure an inch here, we would find eight threads per inch in that section. And if we measure, so it's a little maybe confusing with the jaws there, but if we measure one inch here, that would be sort of to the top of these threads here. So the problem that we have is trying to fit these together or adapt them. And if you picture maybe something a bit like this, it's our Morse taper too. It's a little bit small inside there. So we need some way to bring that together. And maybe the simplest way is if we build something in the middle here. So these are sort of options to bring these together. The simplest way maybe is draw out something like this. Maybe a bit like a sleeve. So it's got the one eighth sorry, one by eight thread on the outside. And the, the finer seven eighths, 14 on the inside. So if you picture that one a bit like a sleeve, so this, all of these things are sort of cut, cut across their center line here. Maybe a little tricky to visualize. Uh, if we turned this piece on its side, it would look like this. With an external 1 by 8 thread and an internal 7 8 14 thread. So the idea here is that we could take this sleeve, put it inside the chuck, and then put our thread, our adapter in there, and then that would hold a tight, tight fit as we turn it. So. That, that's one option. Uh, any obvious problems with that, that solution? So if we think about this dimension here as 7 eighths of an inch, this dimension is essentially 8 eighths of an inch, then that only leaves us with 1 eighth. And if this was 1 eighth, we might be able to make this work, but we actually only have half of that. We only have 1 16th on the top and 1 16th on the bottom. So there's not much, not much thickness there and the threads might actually touch each other or get, get close enough that they would tear away. So I'm, I'm not even sure we could machine this part, this, this little sleeve, even if we wanted to. I think this, this is not a crazy idea. It's obviously the simplest, but what if we modify this a bit? What if we pull the coarse thread this way and the fine thread this way? So we end up with something that looks like this. So we have our coarse one by eight thread here. And then we have a thicker piece of material here and our finer thread on the inside. So this is one by eight. 
and this is 7 8 by 14. And we could play with this a bit too. If you, you know, if you're concerned with this distance, you could pull that out a bit more. You know, you kind of want good good contact here, so maybe we put a bit of a shoulder, bump that out a bit. And the idea here would be we could take that adapter, thread that in, and then thread ours in like that. And that would hold pretty tight. So that, that seems like a decent option. And actually these are available in many different sizes, combinations. You can imagine lots of different adapters on this side, lots of different threading on that side. And I actually could not find a 7 8 by 14 internal thread, 1 by 8 external thread. I couldn't believe it. Maybe it's out there. I was not able to find it. So if this is the type of piece that we want, uh, maybe we build it. So that's that's certainly an option. Uh, fairly easy to do this one by eight external thread. We could turn that on the metal lathe. So that's that's half of the problem. The second half is drilling and tapping this internal. That's a little bit trickier. Uh, internal threads are a bit harder. And the other problem, you know, we can certainly turn this on the metal lathe as well. The, the other problem is stopping in time. So with this thread, we could start here and run it out this way. That would work all right. This one is a little bit challenging in here. You might need sort of some relief, sort of a cavity in here. And then there's some dimensional uh, restrictions as you're, as you're going inside. But I think we could, we could address that. So this is certainly one option. It's also maybe not my favorite option. So next idea would be, what if we keep this one by eight because we need that, and we sort of combine this internal piece and this Morse taper thread. So imagine now we've just sort of gone in like this. So we have one by eight on the outside, and we have number two Morse taper on the inside, and we sort of forget about this, this existing adapter. So now this is looking like something that also might be available. And when I was looking up these, on the internet to see what I could find, I found a machinable end Morse taper drill chuck arbor. And they make these for lathe chucks as well. And this is, is really what we're talking about. So it's got the Morse taper customizable. So we want number two and, and we need some sort of end on here, but these ones are machinable. So I started looking into this. And once I knew what I was looking for, going through the shop, I came across this. So this was used from some other project, but this is essentially what we're looking for. So it's got a number two Morse taper here. It's got the threaded end that coincidentally lines up with the drawbar. So the stars are really starting to align on this one and this machinable end. Uh, so as I looked at this and, and one thing, so to make this Morse taper, they probably ground it. And one thing with grinding or with drilling very slowly, uh, you can get an effect uh, called work hardening. So it actually makes this surface a bit harder after it's been worked and it's harder to machine a second time. So I was a bit concerned that if, if this piece was the same hardness, sort of this tool steel strength, I might have a, a heck of a time trying to turn this down and get a thread in there. Uh, but when I looked into it, this end is actually made of a softer steel. So it's, I think it's tempered differently. So this is hardened steel and this is softer. So it's designed to be machined. So now I'm thinking this is exactly what we're looking for. And these pieces run about $50, $60. So we're still at $0 for this project, having found one that I'm pretty sure we can repurpose. So this will be the idea here is turn a one by eight thread on here. We'll leave a shoulder and we've got the Morse taper and the thread. So two, the thread and the taper are done for us. We just need to put this thread on. And one of the other things as I read through the forums and tried to see, uh, have people done things like this? What's, what's the best practice? This is sort of like my, my OPEX review. It seems like there are two schools of thought. One saying, always leave a shoulder 
and and one saying don't leave a shoulder. So what what I mean here is if we've got our choice here, we've got the taper taper on this side here, and right now it looks like this. We have two choices. We can cut the thread like this and leave this shoulder here. So this, this is good material and we would cut these pieces off. Leave the shoulder and that lets, as the chuck threads on, that lets it stop against something as it threads on. And the other school of thought is take off the shoulder and let it thread all the way across and then it will register on the machine itself. So they're saying that this, this surface here is a better mating surface, I guess, against the machine. And it, it seems like there are good arguments on both sides. I think to start off, I'm going to leave the shoulder. And I think about this a bit like a haircut. You know, it's if we take, take the shoulder off, it's hard to put it back on. But if we leave the shoulder and we don't like it, it's easy enough to take it off after. So that, that's where I'm going on this one. So I'll show you the, the setup. There's a few important things to consider when you're threading, but uh, it's not too, too complicated if, uh, if you've got those nailed down. So let's take a look. So let's see what that would look like. Adapter in, imagine it has threads on it, take our chuck, thread it on, just like that. So one of the considerations uh, when you're threading is, is to look at uh, what your pitch is and what type of thread you're looking at. Most threads will be this sort of triangle shape. Uh, 60 degree is pretty common. So you want a, a bit like this that has 60, uh, 60 degrees uh, on the point. So we'll basically put this in the lathe, turn it on and run it this way. So we'll spin this piece. We'll spin this piece and we'll move this along and cut that thread. So we'll go in a little bit, maybe one or two thousandths of an inch at a time, uh, just because this, this is fairly hard and we'll just scrape like this. And as long as we keep it lined up on the shaft, it'll keep cutting in the same groove. And I'll talk a bit about how, how we do that. And a few passes, uh, maybe, yeah, quite a few passes and we'll get that thread cut. So let's just look and see uh, what this 60 degree angle is going to look like. So this is Machinery's Handbook, 20th edition. And this is a, a great book on mechanical engineering, things, gears, threads. Uh, this one is printed in 1975. So they're up to 30th edition now. And with lots of things, I would recommend getting the latest version but I feel like screw threads and, and gearing is probably about the same since 1975. So I think we're good here. Uh, so a few terms, I guess we've got, so here's a picture of an internal thread. So the, the hash marks kind of showing, uh, this would be like a nut, let's say, if you're looking at the inside of a nut. And then the external thread here is the one that we're gonna cut, uh, which looks maybe a bit more like a screw that's gonna screw into something. So, what we're essentially going to do, it might be easier to show on the top one here, just uh, because we'll be cutting from the bottom on the video. Uh, we're going to start it here, spin the work, and draw the tool across. There are two ways to do it. We could plunge in here, cut on both sides, and that's, that's the simple method. Or we can cut just on this leading edge. It's a bit more complicated. Uh, there's advantages there, but... There's some pretty good YouTube videos on different methods to cut screw threads. So this is one of the things that's, that's helpful with this uh, machinery's handbook. So if we look down here, so under unified screw threads, coarse thread series, so here we've got one inch. So the basic major diameter is one inch, eight threads per inch in our case. And what I wanna know is uh, the basic pitch the external thread minor diameter and the internal thread minor diameter. So if we come back a bit here, so 
So I basically want to look at how deep do we cut. If this is, if we're cutting an external thread and the final or the initial size is here, there we go. So the initial size is here. How much do I want to cut into it? How deep is that going to be? And there are two ways to go about this, I guess. If we were specifying it for an engineering company, we would likely need much more detail because we're sending it out to get cut and they need to know what tolerance is acceptable and, and a few things. So in our case, I'm concerned about these two. So I want to know what the standard for the internal thread is. So 0.86 inches and the external thread is 0.84 inches. So this is telling me that the internal thread on the chuck will be close to this 0.86, maybe plus or minus some tolerance. And the external thread I should be cutting is 0.846. So what I want to know is once I'm, I'll cut it down until I'm less than 0.86 and then I'll test the fit. And the proper fit should be somewhere between these two numbers. And if I go past 0.846, I've kind of gone too far. So I might not have as much much thread um, surface catching at that point. But I'm thinking this is kind of the range. So I'll aim for 0.87 and start fitting and then see where it lines up. And once it threads on and touches the shoulder with, with no play, or I can't really jiggle it, I'd be happy with that. So this is sort of the, on one end of the spectrum, fully specified, on the other end of the spectrum, uh, cut it till it fits, and I'm trying to land in the middle somewhere. So I have an idea where I'm going and I want to look for this range. So let's take a look at the lathe setup. So this is the Maximat V10. And here we can set our lathe speed. So we'll go fairly slowly here. And this is the gearbox to set the threads. So we want eight threads per inch. So we're in A position on this side and we're engaged on the far left of this gearbox. So you can make all these different combinations if you want to. So that that's the setting we need. So this chuck, as it rotates, uh, it'll be coming toward us here. And that basically says this will do eight revolutions to cut eight threads as this carriage moves one inch this way. So it'll give us eight threads per inch consistently. Uh, we set the compound here to 30 degrees, our cutting angle. And then we set the, the piece that we're cutting with to have an angle of 60 degrees and everything should work. Did I just say everything should work? Well, as things often go, I figured this would take about an hour and I'd be back here with a screw thread. I turned the lathe on. It was working fine. When I engaged the threading attachment, I heard this awful clunking sound. So. I haven't used the threading attachment in a while and I took a video of this gear train but basically if you open it up and look at what's inside there's one of these nylon gears and the goal here is if anything gets jammed up this one breaks to save your steel gears and not destroy your transmission so if you can see there crack in the nylon gear so this happened a while ago this this didn't happen today uh, I just haven't used this uh, this part of the lathe in a while so I didn't realize this was waiting for us so in a way a little bit exciting this means uh, I get to fabricate a gear and replace this I thought the video would get a bit long if we get sidetracked into gear fabrication so I'll separate that in, out into a, a separate video and we will snap our fingers new gears installed and we'll get back to threading so the nicely prepared machinable end Morse taper is a little bit precious. I'd rather not practice on that for the first go. So I took a piece of bar stock like this and set everything up and turned that one by eight thread to see uh, just how close we are. And this is what came out. So that looked pretty good. And so if we take our mini chuck here and thread it in. That looks great. So that should work just fine. So we'll keep the same settings and turn it on uh, the Morse taper for real. 
just as we're getting set up here, a quick note on hand safety. Gloves are not recommended when working with spinning machines, neither are loose jewelry. So I have tight fitting rings, but that's why you see no gloves. Initial checks complete, let's go. So at this point, the power went out, and this is me trying to make sure the lathe is turned off so it doesn't start up when the power comes back on, and then find my way out of the shop trying to remember where all the pointy things are. So I made it out. It took a few hours, and power came back. So we'll pick this up in part two and finish up where we left off.